hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel it is victor once again it's another day so we have another scholarship so today we are at loughborough university in the uk as usual in search of postgraduate opportunities so for this particular one there are several departments several disciplines where you can move from a bsc to a direct phd yes you can skip a master's actually move directly from a good bsc to a phd but if you have a master's already that is still good that will give you an advantage so we'll be looking at different opportunities at loughborough university and it's still open so if your aim is to get into the uk and start studying by september october this year i think you want to look at this opportunity and of course if you're coming here for the first time please do not forget to subscribe there are several materials on this channel already on fully funded scholarships around the world so nobody does it better than we do it here <laughs> i would tell you that so please subscribe quickly and also recommend the channel to your friends to your family members and all those interested in funding opportunities so let's begin without any further delay postgraduate opportunities at loughborough university so first, we actually begin with the English language requirements. As some of you know, some of these international universities require you to take like English tests, maybe the IELTS or the TOEFL or things like that. So these are different bits of information on the English language test for this university. Fortunately, there are exemptions, there are waivers. So you do not need to take the test if you pass some other criteria. For instance, it's said here, international school-based qualification. So if you studied outside the UK, these are the different qualifications that may, that may be accepted in place of the IELTS exam. So this is Australia, this is Austria, Belgium. These are the certifications accepted in lieu for that English language test we talked about. So I'll go straight to Nigeria, my country, and check if there is a waiver so fortunately there's a waiver for nigeria as well the senior secondary school certificate neco and she gets a minimum of a c6 so those from nigeria would know what this is all about so apart from nigeria we could go to the west african subcontinent in general you can see west africa as ghana nigeria liberia cameroon and the rest all the countries that take this exam i'm not sure if Cameroon does anyway. But if you take this exam in your high school, the West African Examination Senior School Certificate Examination, that's a mouthful. Um, you should also get a C6 and that would um, take you through. You do not need to present any other certificate. Of course, check for your own country. You can see here Zambia, Zimbabwe. Check for your own country and see what kind of exemption you can get so you wouldn't have to write the test. Look at India here as well. These are the specifications from India. You can check for your own country and fingers crossed, you wouldn't have to write the IELTS or the TOEFL. The exam itself is not bad. It's just that it's quite expensive. I took mine about, I think five, six years ago and I had to save for a number of months if I was able to fund the exam, if I was able to raise enough fees. So that's it for this one. Fortunately, the exemptions, so we're happy about this. Hooray. So let's move to the funded opportunities we talked about so this here is the website for the funded opportunities and let's just make it general all subject areas and then remember to select the tab of international students because there are some kind of funding that is just targeted at home students so you want to make it international students of course that's if you're not from the uk and you can see that there are several opportunities, several opportunities here, different departments. Be careful of the deadline. So this one says June, and um, June is quite far away. But then if you scroll down a little, you will see another one in the mathematics department saying 12th of March. So why this particular one in the engineering department is saying June? This one is saying 12th of March. Another one is even saying February. You can see geometrical saying something about February, another February, February 12th. So do not be, do not be deceived by some of these dates here. Check for your own particular department. Some might have early, some might have late um, deadlines. Check for your own department and make sure you keep tabs of exactly when to submit your application. So you have some very early deadlines here, I must say. 
So if you're interested in these ones with very early deadlines, start working as soon as possible. In fact, as soon as you see this video, start working. Then you have other ones towards the end of the month, or some of them in March, some of them mid-February. So start working as soon as possible. So by way of an example, let's see, let's narrow this down to a particular field. And I'm going straight to international relations, politics, history, to just show you, give you a feel of how to apply. So let's go to this opportunity and see what it covers, the application requirements and things like that. So you can see here on your own that it requires a 2-1 or equivalent, that's a bachelor's degree, a B or a 2-1. If you have a distinction, wonderful. You can see here as well that it is fully funded both for international and UK students. So whether you're coming from China, Nigeria, Afghanistan, Mexico, it is fully funded regardless of where you're coming from. Then it's three years or six years part-time. Usually it's difficult to get part-time as an international student, I would say. So I think you should be going in for this one. And then the deadline for this one, particularly for the um, politics department is um, the 31st of March. So these are the departments under it. You can see geography, environment, international relations, politics, and history. The department also has certain focus. Or is there focus? Is that a, is that a word? So different um, agendas or themes they want you to look at. And these are the themes your research should revolve around. These are the themes your research should revolve around. And they said you should actually send a proposal to send a proposal on these different areas. So propose an idea, bring a research question, bring a research idea and pitch it to this department, pitch your idea to this department and then hopefully you'll be taken on board. It's also written here that you have to contact the school beforehand to discuss your proposal. So you have to look for somebody in that department you're interested in and discuss with the person and the potential supervisor has to give you like a green light before you go ahead with your application because there's no point, you know, submitting an application for a PhD if there's no professor in there to supervise you. So the best thing to do is to um, go to the department and check the list of professors. If you also have inquiries, there's also an email here. This is quite helpful. You could contact them directly and ask your question. So we'll, we'll come back to this department. Let's just scroll down a little. So just one name of a supervisor was given here. I'm sure there are several other supervisors here, but we could dig out their names from this department but we'll look at this soon do not worry so just scroll down a little and get once again the applications requirement it said the undergraduate degree a first class a second class upper or even the lower and honors okay so that makes that makes a lot of sense but then of course this will be prioritized over a second class lower because i think it was said here a two one so anything below a 2 one, you might struggle a little bit if you if you ask me. Here you can also get your country equivalent. So to check for your country. So I'll go to Nigeria here to check for the qualifications from your country that will pass. Okay, so this is Nigeria. If your total GPA is seven, for a first class you have to get a six, second class you have to get a five. So you understand my GPA was, I think it was five. So I'm within this region, the total GPA that's the max you can get and to qualify for a first class a 4.5 and so you get the gist then for the english language requirements we looked at that already unfortunately there are waivers so good news of course for fees fully funded and for the particular amount so it's written here let me make it a little bit bolder if possible so it's written here so you get over seventeen thousand per annum and then it covers both international and UK home fees. So this is wonderful. This is wonderful. And then candidates will be notified of the decisions in the week commencing 29th of May. So by the 29th of May, around that period, you hope to get like a, a feedback on your application. And it's also written here how to apply. Please, as much as possible, follow the instruction on how to apply. So let's look for a supervisor for you, shall we? Let's show you quickly of how to look for a supervisor. And keep in mind, the application procedure for one department might differ from another. So this is just for politics, geography, and the rest. For chemistry, it might be different. For mathematics, it might be different. So as I said in the beginning, look for the 
specific information for the course you intend to apply for. So let's go to politics, international relations and see what we can get out of it, okay? So let's look for supervisors. So there is a, a, a link here on how to write a proposal. So in case you don't know how to write one, there is a short link here on how to do so. So they got you covered thrown through. I actually ha also have a video on my channel on how to write a proposal. So if you just go to the home page, just scroll down a little bit. Go down a little bit and check these ones. Statement of purpose, research proposal, letter of motivation. So here I shared how to write a research proposal, drawing from my own experience of winning uh, multiple awards for my proposal and other things about PhD as well, you might be interested in them. So check them out. It will help you sort out that issue of a proposal, a PhD topic and things like that. So let's return to looking for a supervisor. So I go through the tab, look for staff and then academic staff. And then this is the list of supervisors they have for the politics department. So what you're meant to do now is to check their profile individually and see the one who's research interests closely aligned with yours and what do you do send the person an email and um, state your intention introduce yourself your academic background tell them you want to apply for this course give them a taste of the the research question the research topic you're interested in send them a copy of your cv and um, there's also a guideline on this channel on how to contact a professor it's also here so it's already the work is already done for you just follow the instructions and you will be fine so that is it for politics department remember there are several other departments here and let's go back to the future function and click on all subjects all subjects so you can see you have for different subjects this is mathematics for instance let's see what they have to offer before we go as usual fully funded has the minimum of a 2-1 also a match deadline and then you also check here if you have to bring your own proposal or if you're going to just use the research interest or the research areas already delineated by the supervisors. So check closely. It's quite related to what we've seen already. So this, this is real, guys. It's not a joke. Fully funded opportunity. But this one is a four-year program a three plus one so the one usually is a master's and the three is a phd also fully funded and over seventeen thousand pounds as your living stipend so for how to apply is also written here and just follow the instructions and you will be fine so i hope this was useful guys dozens of fully funded opportunities for international students in different disciplines so whether you are from the sciences or the practical sciences or the social sciences the humanities law environment business wherever you're coming from i think there is something for everybody if you only sit down put forward the competitive application and of course we wish you good luck as usual guys we cannot wait to celebrate you so get to work and start putting your documents together. There are several materials, hundreds of materials on this channel already supporting your dream of an international scholarship wherever you want to study in the world. So put in the work and I will see you at the top sooner than later. Bye-bye for now and do not forget to subscribe.